Okay, so welcome back. In this video series, we've been talking about how we can do network-based authentication. So where we basically have a central store of usernames and passwords, and then we've got a number of different systems that can all authenticate against that um, one place where we st like store or manage our us usernames and passwords and things. So we've talked about LDAP as a um, in a separate video, and that's basically just this uh, database that can, or a protocol for querying a database that stores a, uh, um, like a hierarchical like tree structure of stuff. And you get Kerberos, which is basically this ticket-based network protocol for doing authentication um, using a trusted third party. So you can have a client say, uh, I am who I say I am. And they say, yes, okay, here you go, here's a token, and you can use that to access stuff off the server. So Active Directory is the way that Microsoft Windows combines those things together and a bunch of other stuff. And slightly modified ways of using Kerberos and LDAP, but essentially it uses um, Kerberos for getting computers to authenticate against each other or against against the central store and uses the, those tickets to then um, grant permissions to access uh, each other's resources and uses LDAP as the protocol that it uses to retrieve the information about user accounts and things like that. So usually the way that um, will be set up in a large organization that has a lot of Windows systems, you'll set up a domain. Uh, and so then you have a uh, all the security principles are registered with a central database, uh, which is managed by our Active Directory, known as a domain controller. So you've got a server, which is known as a domain controller, and it stores, has the information about the user accounts on it. Um, so the domain controller is a Windows server. You can technically, you can now do it as on a Samba system on, on um, Linux. Um, but, you know, t typically it'll be a Windows server. And Active Directory domain services are all of those um, like servers, like server software that you would normally have running um, that provo provides those core functions that, of what Active Directory does to manage users and computers. But a domain controller will also have other software on it. So you would you would typically have like a Kerberos key distribution center for doing the, the Kerberos stuff, but you also have things like uh, like Windows Time Server to synchronize the clocks between the systems because that's important for the way that Kerberos uh, timestamps um, tokens and things. So you need to synchronize your clock between your systems, otherwise it won't work properly. Um, the way that Windows has its SID, security identifiers for each user, it actually is a long unique string and inside that um, for, for that user, it actually includes information about what domain they belong to. So, um, and you can have computers that get assigned to organizational units, which you'll recognize as being similar to what I was talking about in um, when I was talking about LDAP. So, Active Directory also has a kind of a cool feature known as group policy. So, what group policy automate, automates specifying security controls for Windows systems. Uh, and it, it does this thing where it distributes the policy to the different computers within the Active Directory, within the domain. So it will automatically um, propagate policy changes to the different systems on the server. And the way it does, works behind the scenes is basically it refreshes the policy settings every 60 minutes. It uses like a random time offset so that it um, so it doesn't like flood the network all at once, at, you know, every 90 minutes. But so it kind of spreads it out a bit. Uh, but just like it's constantly just checking for whether they're um, or pushing out like uh, policy changes to all the different systems. You can force it by on, as a user to, to get it to refresh, but it will refresh itself as well. So um, you have group policy objects, which um, can apply rules to uh, like locally on a site, a domain or an organizational unit. And there's like this in way that policies are inherited. Um, so any thing that you set on a higher level will automatically apply to the lower levels. Um, so you know if you set it for a domain it will you know will, will apply all the way down. Um, and so domains um, 
organizational units and, and child organizational units, they, they inherit their settings from their parents, uh, unless you disable the inheritance, which is a setting that you can, you can set. Uh, and it includes things like drive mappings, power options, like folder redirection, um, Internet Explorer or, like, or Edge, like you know, web browser like settings. Um, the local accounts and passwords, so password policy, lockout policy, curb, like Kerberos policy, like how long tickets are before they expire, all that stuff can be set in group policy. So in the LDAP video I mentioned that you on Unix systems you would often store kind of stuff that you wanted to centralize like that in LDAP, uh, whereas on Active Directory you, you would do it as part of group policy get, that gets pushed out. Um, so some of the strengths of we and weaknesses of Active Directory is that it can be relatively easy if you've mostly got a Windows-based, um, like if you're running a, a Windows shop, like you've got mostly um, Microsoft Windows systems, then it can be like quite easy to manage them. Um, it's not as quite as easy to integrate into Unix systems, but it is possible. And actually, um, part of the complexity is just that there's multiple ways that you can do it. Actually, it's not that hard to get a Linux system to authenticate against Active Directory. Um, it's just there's multiple ways that you can do that. And depending on the way that you set it up will behave a little bit differently. And so if you're setting a system up, it's, you know, you kind of, you've got a few options of ways to do it. Um, Active Directory has a wide support for managing and setting various kinds of policies and uh, on clients that can choose to enforce those policies. It can provide a false sense of security as clients can um, can often get onto the network without the local rules being enforced. So for example, you could literally just plug a um, Kali Linux system into your network and access the network. And if someone who wasn't thinking about it carefully, they might think that no one can access the network that isn't a part of the Windows ecosystem. Um, and so that's something to be aware of, is that you, know, you can literally just start working over the network. Um, and that would obviously, if you had rules that said, well, you can't start any programs, well, that only works if they're only using your systems to access the network. Um, so there are also authentication attacks. Um, local admins are specifically quite a risk to do domain admin access. So if you've got someone who's a local admin to a machine, so for example, you've got someone that says, I need to be a, a administrator of my own machine. If you give them that permission, then they can, um, if a domain ad administrator is also logged into that same machine, then the local admin might be able to basically get access to a domain admin. Um, and there's a bunch of other specific kind of Windows attacks, like pass the hash and things that are possible on um, you know, Windows uh, networked systems. 